I'm Matthew Munson and welcome to Thanet Writers Meet Maggie Harris, poet, author of eight books, uh, including, well I must mention, Limbo Lands, one of her very first works. Maggie, welcome. Thank you, Matthew. Lovely to meet you. And you. Now, Maggie, I'm very intrigued actually. I want to first of all ask you about these books that, that I've just mentioned. In fact, you've got quite a few published works, both poetry and short fiction, stories, short yeah. stories. Yeah. Um, Tell us about them. What's what's the mix of poetry and, and fiction that you've got? What what's kind of the the blend for you? Tell us a bit about your your your, your oeuvre so far. Oeuvre so far. Okay. Um. Well, my first collection of poems is called Limbo Lands. That's the one we picked up. That's the one. Yep. Yes. And I kind of I, I always wrote stories and poems from quite a short time, but the poetry began to take over in a way mm. because I, I went to, to university. I went to uh, Kent when I was 39, so it was quite a kind of late thing for me. Um, and um, I also started doing performance in Broadstairs and organising events, and poetry seemed to be the way to go. So for a number of years, poetry was what I concentrated on. And I had, I think, about three collections of poetry out. And then um, I did a, a memoir of growing up in Guyana, and the short stories followed that because I rekindled my love of prose through the memoir. Right. Um, even though when I was doing the memoir, actually, I was slightly, not criticised, but the editor who was editing it at the time said it's a bit poetic. So I had to kind of work on that and make it more prosaic. So okay. the poetry, you know, was still very, very much there. Um, and um, now, I, well, when my, I've returned to poetry for my last collection. Yeah. Which, and, no, which uh, one which was that? 60 Years of Loving. Mm -hmm. um, which is our latest yes, one. That's the latest one, Absolutely. yes. That's the one that uh, won the Guyana Prize last year. Which I want to talk to you about in a little bit. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, obviously we've touched on there, you're a poet and you're an author. I mean, mm -hmm. for you, how do you find a balance between your poetry and your and your prose work? I mean, what, what, how do you decide what you're going to write at any one, at any one time? Uh, um, well... I don't think it's really a definite decision. They're kind, of, they're kind of organic, you know. And um, with the last collection of poems, I was approaching sixty, and I thought, what can I do to mark this kind of coming of age, <laughs> <laughs> growing older? And I thought it'd be nice to write a book of love poems. So I did concentrate on specifically writing the poems for that. Right. Um, and with the stories, I, when I wrote Canterbury Tales on a Cockerel Morning... Uh, which, again, um, we have here. Yeah, short stories. That, and um, I, was, I was just thinking about Chaucer's work and Canterbury, and, and I love Canterbury, and I've got such a link with Canterbury. You know, I've seen it change so much, you know, pushing like, babies in a push chair and Reismans, which no longer exists, yeah. and architecture changing and all that sort of thing. And I wanted to kind of, oh, I was thinking about new voices, new pilgrims, what are pil pilgrims, where do they come from, you know, how can we write this in, in a modern way. So then I focused on Canterbury and those stories. And that led me on to Thanet because I think, crikey, you've, okay, you've, you know, focused on Canterbury and you, you live in Thanet. And, and I'd always kind of wanted to write a memoir about growing up, not growing up, growing up as an adult, mm. maturing in Thanet with my children. and. And also the, the poetry love, the literature, which is very, very much part of my maturity. Um, and, but I didn't, I don't know, it's, it's difficult to write a memoir when um, everybody's still kind of part of your life. And it's, it's a bit too intrusive. Mm. You know, whereas Kiss Can You My Memoir was a long time ago. Yeah, you know, that Most was your... people have passed on, you know. So in a way, it's kind of like fictionalising some of the things I knew about Planet and paying homage to lots of areas, you know, literature and um, some dissent in some quarters about different things, um, landscape changing, character certain incidents. I mean, it's, it's, certainly, it's certainly interesting that point of view because Sally has, I think, changed as a as a, a an island so much yes. that you reflect that I think in that book very distinctly. I think, don't you? Yes, yes, definitely. And I I, I do it out of love because I, I feel extremely fortunate to be able to write about to, to, to be a writer mm. you know I, you know I think it's extremely fortunate I mean many times I thought I should have a proper job <laughs> <laughs> you know um, but one thing I did want to do with the in Margaret by lunchtime stories is to imagine Thanet 
not just as now, but in the past. So I start, I had this vision of, you know, pre-Roman. So they start very early stories, the three or four stories that kind of gradually come up to present day, because I wanted this kind of bird's eye view, you know, because history is really important to me. I don't like to look at something and just see it as um, of its own making. I think about connections and time pass and people treading this very earth and, yeah. you know, all those sorts of... Um, oh, fantastic. Now, yeah. Actually, Maggie, I, I want to go back to 60 Years of Loving because, as you say, you were awarded the Ghana Prize um, for this. That's true, yes. Talk us through actually what is the Ghana Prize and actually, you know, I mean, what it must have felt like to have been awarded the, 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 the prize. Tell us a little yeah. bit about that. The Guyana Prize is a very prestigious prize um, because Guyana is a very poor country. Well, it's got riches, obviously, of course, but not always in the right hands. Um, and um, I, I had a fantastic education in Guyana, and, you know, we studied Latin and you know, very kind of British education, um, but mixed with um, the history and the landscape. It's very, very rich in Guyana. Excuse me. <coughs> Guyana is very, very rich in its writers. And even I, even recently, I was doing some research and there are 97 Guyanese books that I have not read. I couldn't believe it. And there's just something very distinct about Guyanese writing. I mean, the Caribbean is very rich in, in, in authors and poets anyway. But it, it must be, a, well, different, different ideas, I think, I think because it's a continent. Um, and you've got South America there, you've got all those echoes, you know, you've got this big country, you've got the rainforest. So the writers are very distinct. And, they've, you know, so they're, they're really, um, of very good writers and appreciation of literature. So the Guyana Prize, you know, came out of honouring their, their writers. And I did win it for Limbo Lands in 1999 or 2000, I think it was. But at the time I was here living in Broadstairs and at the time I couldn't go to receive the prize because it was like the week before Christmas. <sighs> There were no flights, I had my little children who were waiting for Father Christmas. <laughs> so it's a bit like a dream, you know, yeah. winning the prize. So, but this time when I won it for 60 Years of Loving, I thought, I must go. Yeah. And I was honoured to be able to do so. I mean, to actually win it twice as well, that's, that's quite an achievement, I, I would say. I am very, very proud, yeah. you know, to have done that. And I, I, I feel, I think if I die tomorrow, I will feel that I've achieved something because they, they because they respect literature so much yeah you know they, they take it very seriously tell us a little bit about your experience of, of literature events your history with that because i'm interested to know you know kind of what makes a good event i mean a lot of people watching this will be interested to know what, what's a good event to go to why should i engage with this event and not that event from your experience what works well, well i've never thought that literature of, of course you, you you can curl up with a book and be happy with it but that's never been enough for me. In a way, my writing poetry and sharing with other people in a class led on to engagement on a bigger scale. And, you know, I, I began to really appreciate the fact that you could share this physically with people and you got so much back, you know, because you know, you're not only sharing your work, you're listening to others. And we all learn from that process. Um, so it went on from there and I ended up um, developing a, a three-year festival which was um, called Inscribe in the Island. And um, I also got a scholarship to go to Barbados when I was at university to study performance poetry. And seeing them perform in Barbados and knowing what I knew of black British poetry as well, because that was my, my content, um, I really began to enjoy the performance aspect and appreciate just simple things as how you project your work. And it almost becomes like a bit of a prayer meeting, I find, of, of poetry readings, because you've got the pulpit and the poet and the audience, you know, and it's a bit like kind of black American um, 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 congregations where they, oh yeah, you know, because they, they actually did this in the Caribbean. If you did a poem, they really liked it, you know, they would be, be really kind of physical in their appreciation. Okay. You know, so there was this interaction, which, which was great. And it just seemed a, a, a simple way and a very powerful way of engaging with people with literature, you know, which I still enjoy. And that's interesting, actually, because I want to touch on something else you said there as well about kind of the poetry groups, etc. What are your views on sort of poetry groups, writers groups? Do you belong to any or have you ever belonged to kind of, you know, writers groups, anything like that? And, and actually, do you see a benefit for those types of, of, of groups existing? Definitely. I don't think I, I would have um, achieved as much as I did without being part of the group. 
um, because in a way it's another aspect of, of working in a community with me because I don't like to work in isolation. Um, because I, it's not that you go there to kind of learn anything in a way, it's, it's the sharing, you do learn, you, you do learn, but it's, I suppose what I'm trying to say is you think, okay, you've been doing this for 20 years, what else do you need to learn? But I don't believe that's true, I think you're always learning, and um, you're always surprised by what somebody does. And also, if you're at a certain level, that level that you can able, to, you're able to offer critique. Mm. I think one should, if it's asked and if it's appreciated, you know, because I could offer an aspect of something that I know, and this person could mm. as well. So that sharing thing, I think, is really important. Okay, I mean, I could talk to you today about this, and it's absolutely fascinating. But I'm conscious I must bring the interview to a close at some point, <laughs> although it's absolutely fascinating. But my last question to you, I guess, Maggie, is, what's next for Maggie Harris? I've recently been taken on board by, by an agency called Renaissance One who have asked me to do some wonderful things. It's quite nice to, for somebody else to say, let me do a little bit of it for you. Yeah. You know? So Fantastic. that's that's what I'm doing at the moment, just you know, concentrating on some some events. Well, it sounds like you're being kept busy, which is, yeah. which is great. Well, Maggie, I could talk to you all day, but I'm, I'm conscious of the time as well. But th thank you so much for coming to talk to us. It's, like, it's, been, a, it's been a real pleasure. Thank, thank you so, very thank much. You. Thank you. Well, my sincere thanks to our guest, Maggie Harris, today. I'm Matthew Munson, and on behalf of Thanet Writers, thank you for watching. See you again. Mm -hmm.